everyone, so today I have Michaela with me and I am going to be doing a video on her chest physio. That's right, bum. So this video was requested a while back, um, before the beginning of summer, I believe. And I have been doing her chest physio, so I figured why not show you guys how I do it, why I do it, um, and the techniques behind it. Um, so I guess throughout the video I'll just kind of talk and um, tell you what I'm doing, why I'm doing the things I'm doing, um, and what it basically does for her. So um, I currently right now do her physio twice a day. Um, she was sick a little while back um, and I'm just basically weaning her off of the chest physio now. Um, just kind of like a medication where you wean someone off of a medication. Chest physio, you kind of do the same thing. Um, it's a prevention tool as well as a treatment tool. So normally Michaela is naked, but for the purpose of this video, um, I just put her little bralette outfit on her. When you are doing chest physio on someone, you don't want to be doing their physio on bare skin. Um, so I always use a receiving blanket. Um, this is a very thin one. So you still want it to be effective, but you don't want it to harm them. Um, so that's why I use that. Um, if she does have a t-shirt on or something, then that's fine. I don't need to use a receiving blanket. Um, but as for right now, it is a million degrees in here. We have a fire going um, just across the room. So um, it is pretty warm in here. I just want to say as a disclaimer, I am in no way, shape, or form a physio or occupational therapist. Um, if you do try this at home, please talk to someone who knows what they are doing correctly. I have actually been taught by a physiotherapist um, from one of the best hospitals in the world for children. Um, so I do know what I'm doing, however, I do not want to be responsible for anything that you guys are doing at home. Um, because this type of thing can actually harm someone in ways where bruising occurs or you can take their breath away or um, they can stop breathing altogether. So this is very important to speak to a physiotherapist um, and make sure that you're doing it correctly. So this is basically just an information video and if you already know how to do it, um, but you're just not sure on some of the techniques, then this is the video to watch. So let's just get into it. Okay, so first things first, I use my receiving blanket. And I usually make it so that it's twice over. So folded once, and then folded twice. Um, they come out folded, so it's not like I have to fold it um, to do this. Then what you're going to do is lay it over the person's rib cage, um, lift their arm out, and then that way you have this flat surface. So what you're going to be doing is percussions first, and you're going to cup your hand kind of like this so that you have a little cup here. You don't want it to be flat, and you don't want it to be too rigid, but you want to be able to cup it here around her rib cage in order to make it effective. So basically what I do is I start in the lower lung and I work my way up to the upper lung. Um, so for her right now, I am only doing two and a half minutes of lower, two and a half minutes of upper, and then when we get to it, when I do the vibrations, I do two and a half minutes of that. When she is sick, like really sick and very congested and full of fluids, um, I do three minutes each. Um, that seems to work for her. Um, again, talk to your physiotherapist and see what you need to um, be doing to make it effective for someone that you're doing it for. So anyways, I'm gonna just start. Um, I have, I use my phone as my timer and I just basically put on my stopwatch and start. So you're just gonna start by using your hand and percussioning on their lungs, basically. And you don't want it to be too hard, but you don't want it to be too soft either. And you want to be able to hear a percussion sound. You don't want to hear a flat sound. You don't want to hear a dull sound. Um, so it's going to sound like this. And I 
hope you guys can hear that on the camera. So you just want that nice beat. Right, beautifuls? And Michaela is one of the people that actually like chest physio. Um, for the most part, she does. There are some days where she doesn't care for it, but she does like it. So again, just nice beat of percussions. And you can tell by her face that she is not disturbed by it. She's not uncomfortable. She's recognizing the, the sounds and the feeling of it, but she's not hurting. So we're almost at a minute and a half. So we only have a minute to go. And doing this over the course of, I guess, the last six months or so, um, learning this, um, I've actually been able to teach people at different hospitals how to do this. Um, our local hospital doesn't have a team that comes in and does this, so I was actually teaching nurses um, at our local hospital, which was pretty neat. Um, so yeah. Um, we're at two minutes now, and just a thing to recognize, um, Michaela's face is facing towards me. I need to be able to see her face at all times. Um, when you get good at this, which obviously I've been doing this for a while, I know how to um, do it, you can have them facing away from you, whatever's comfortable for you to do um, the percussions and vibrations. Um, so we're at two and a half minutes. I'm just going to switch to the upper. And sometimes you have to hold their arm out of the way and then just continue on. So I just moved up one hand and again. So two and a half minutes again. So again, I have her face facing towards me so that I can see her face. This is mainly because if you are doing this, sometimes it can take their breath away. It can, when they're very sick, it can almost um, make things go backwards and be too much for them and not work. It may make things worse. So I need to be able to see her breathing. I need to be able to see her face, the color in her face. Um, with Michaela, her lips go very blue as her oxygen desats and I'm able to tell if I need to stop and just let her come back and then continue on. Um, right now she's on very minimal oxygen. She's on 0.5, actually, oops, she's not on anything. <laughs> um, so she's on 0.5 right now. I just moved um, the oxygen machine two seconds ago and that's why she wasn't on anything. But um, so yeah, she's on oxygen right now. Um, if there was a case where I thought she was desatting, I would then stop and then turn up her oxygen if needed, um, if she doesn't kind of recover from desatting. So, um, again, I would be able to have her facing away from me. A lot of kids or a lot of people are different as well. Um, you may notice different things that, um, that happens when they desat. Um, and it's just basically depending on the person um, and you have to know them. Um, so obviously being a physiotherapist, you would know the different types of things to look for. And I can't remember other things, but I just know what Michaela does when she desats. So she's pretty used to this by now and she's not very sick um, and not on a lot of oxygen. So I don't have an issue of that happening. So it's just after five minutes now. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna place my one. So when I was taught this, you use one hand to do your vibrations. And you're going to do your vibrations down. Um, so with me, the way I'm sitting on the couch, it's easier for me to use two hands. When you're in a hospital room and you have a hospital bed, they're up at a level where you can work and be on either side of them, which makes it a lot easier to use one hand.
However, like I said, I'm on the couch, so I use two hands. So I set my hands, one on her rib cage here, and then one just on the back of her rib cage. And I just want to be sure that I'm looking at my time. And what I'm going to do is with her exhale, I'm going to vibrate down. So this is breaking up all the mucus, well, all of this is breaking up the mucus in her lungs and hoping that these vibrations allow her to cough and bring up those secretions. So again, with her, I'm gonna just start her timer here. With her exhale, you just vibrate down. Now with Michaela, her breaths are very fast and they're very close in between. So t sometimes with her, I'll give her a few breaths in between before I vibrate again. So you don't want to do too, too much because then it'll, like I said before, we'll take the breath away. And sometimes when she's moving, it is difficult to see or hear her exhale. So you have to just watch and know um, the person in order to do it at the correct timing. So again, I'll be doing this for two and a half minutes. And I didn't mention before, but when you're doing the percussions, I work from the lower to the upper, and that's just basically because you want everything to go up. And with the vibrations, you have no choice but to work your way down. Um, that's be the way your lungs go, um, the way your exhale is, everything. You want to be working with the body. You don't want to work against her body, body or breathing. So you'll see her moving around. But this isn't her upset or hurting. Um, she's just basically reacting to what I'm doing to her. Okay, so I'm all done on this side. It's been another two and a half minutes. And now what I do is I flip her to the other end of the couch so that I can work from her other side. Oh, and I did want to mention I do have a um, oxygen monitor on hand. I can periodically check her oxygen levels if I need to. Uh, however, I don't need to as of right now because she's not that sick. Well, she's not sick anymore. Um, this is just the prevention um, treatment. So, yeah, I do have one. We'll check her oxygen if I need to, but as of right now, I don't need to. Okay, so I'm going to try and show you how I flip her around. Um, I have to remove this pillow, and I just wipe her face, and then I switch that to the other end. It's okay. It's okay. And I just roll her onto her back. It's okay. It's okay. And then I have to also move her oxygen tank so that her line doesn't pull. And then what I do is I lift her legs and try and get her to bend. Good girl. And I actually put them between my legs like this. And what I do is I make sure this is out of the way. And I just lift her from her neck, almost sit her up, and then lay her back down on the other side. And I ended up taking her oxygen off anyways. So I'll just fix that. Just make sure her legs are all... Okay. Okay, it's okay. And I use this pillow to keep her head forward and 
that actually helps with her secretions to keep her rolled over so that everything drains out um, and it just keeps her in the position that I need her in. So as you can see, she is coughing, which is a good thing. This is going to help bring everything up that's in her lungs and clear her lungs. Maybe not clear it completely, but definitely get something out that we don't want staying in her lungs. So she is pretty much ready here. As you could tell, when I was moving her, she did get up a, a little bit upset. And you can tell the difference between when I was doing her physio and when I was moving her, how she got upset here and wasn't upset during her physio. So she's okay now, and I guess we'll just start on the other side. Okay, so I got my receipt. I have my receiving blanket here. And I'm just going to set it up. Again, nice and smooth. You don't want any wrinkles in your receiving blanket. Um, it can actually break skin down um, if they are sensitive. She's pretty good for skin breakdown, um, which we're thankful for. Okay, so again, I'm going to just set my timer. And now I use my other hand again, starting from the bottom working my way up, a nice percussion sound, nice beat. Another thing to mention, as you can tell, she is not hooked up to her feed um, behind me. And that is because, well, first of all, she's finished eating. Um, she had her lunch feed at 3, um, but you need to at least stop their feed or not eat anything a half an hour before you do this. Um, having food in your stomach while doing this can make them upset, which in return can make them throw up and aspirate, which makes things go into your lungs and completely do the opposite of what we're trying to do, which is get things out of your lungs. So again, stopping feeds half hour before you start. Um, if, oh my goodness, if the person that you're working on is using puffers, say flow vent or Ventolin, give those 15 minutes beforehand and that'll help get them into their lungs um, before and it'll open up their lungs in order for the physio to be more effective as well. So again, you can see she's not upset whatsoever, not hurting her, but still hard enough that it is effective. We're just at two minutes here. Now for me, doing this for a while, my wrists get really sore. I've heard of people actually using um, an air chamber mask um, to help them do that. They use that instead of their actual hand. Um, I'll insert a picture of that now um, to show you what that looks like if you don't know what I'm talking about. Um, but I've heard that being used in different techniques um, to do this without hurting yourself. Okay, so we're at the two and a half minutes. Now, I like to just switch hands, um, just more comfortable for me. Sometimes you'll see me switching back and forth um, from my hands just because one's getting sore. This wrist happens to be a lot worse than this wrist. Um, I think because in hospital I use this wrist a lot more um, when I'm at her bedside. So if you do see me switch back and forth, that's because. Oh my goodness, that's the phone. So as you can see, on this side, my hand is placed a little bit lower than her armpit, and that's because her shoulder blade protrudes a little bit here. So you don't want to hit her shoulder blade, you want it to hit her lungs. So there's no purpose in hitting up here above, above her shoulder blade. So that's why it's just a little bit lower on this side. Yeah. Oh my goodness, big yawn. 
So it is 9 o'clock at night and we are doing her night physio. So again, like I said before, I do it twice a day and this is her second time today. Um, and you do wean chest physio basically the same as you do as medication. Um, when she's very sick, I do it three times to four times to five times a day. And then you wean her down off times, um, the amount of times you do it. And then also, um, like I said before, when she's sick, I do it three minutes versus two and a half. And I'll even wean her down to two minutes to one and a half minutes. Um, and just basically take her off of it after that. Um, so, we have found chest physio super effective for Michaela, um, even better than, say, antibiotics or oxygen. Um, we find the actual physio therapy of it um, helps the most out of anything. Um, when she's sick. So if you do find that um, your child is getting sick a lot, maybe this is something to consider. This can be used as a prevention tool um, as well as a treatment tool um, to prevent anything from staying in your lungs as well. Okay, so we're done the two and a half minutes there. So maybe I will see it's hard for me to do it like this because <laughs> normally if I'm like this then I can use my one hand and go down um, I hope you can see that and go down like this um, but because I'm in line with her using two hands is just easier okay so again working your way down vibrations and what I'm actually doing is pushing down and basically vibrating my hands so you're not pushing like this. You're just slightly doing a vibration like that. And I hope that registers on camera. Maybe I can even zoom in. And I hope I said before, we use the pillow to keep her prop forward. Now, if you find that the, the person is breathing a little bit heavier um, and they're taking shorter breaths, you can actually do a vibration down and then help bring it back up so you can almost push up on their lungs when they're trying to inhale. As you can tell right now, Michaela sounds pretty clear. Um, when she's sick, you would hear a lot of, lot of wet secretion noises. Ten seconds to go. So that is it. I can remove my receiving blanket. And that is it. So after this, I get her medications ready and put her to bed. Um, so that is pretty much all for the chest physio. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. I will either answer them down below or I can make a separate video, maybe a Q&A on this topic alone. Um, I'm going to have Michaela's routine video come out. 
um, I believe next Wednesday. Um, I am trying to get a lot of videos out to you guys for the month of December. Um, I'm trying to be very strict on my schedule and do three videos a week. Um, hold me to it, that way I have to do them. Um, so anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something new. Um, again, I am not a healthcare professional. I am just someone that does this at home with my own daughter. I've been taught by a physiotherapist, um, but I am not a physiotherapist. So please talk to someone that knows what they're doing before you try this at home. Um, I wouldn't want anything to happen to someone that you love. So again, Michaela is feeling much better. Um, she was quite sick for a while, um, but we're getting better just before Christmas, which is great. Um, again, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel if you are new. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next video. Bye guys. Say bye beautifuls. Bye beautifuls. See, I'm ready for bed. Ready for bed.